Today, we will discuss the new India-China disengagement on the border, particularly in Ladakh. I'm sure most of you have some idea about the history of India-China issues on the border. Many of you may not have been born in 1962, but I was a young boy at that time. It was one of the frightening things that happened to India because we had believed that India and China will work together, both ancient civilizations, peaceful countries, and so on. So Pandit Nehru developed an idea of India-China friendship extending into Asia and then perhaps Asia-Africa. So he had a vision of India and China working together, leading to create a group of countries which would counter both the West and the East. But his dream was totally destroyed in 1962 when China unleashed aggression against India along the border between India and China. Of course, going back, when the Dalai Lama came to India because he was under threat of being destroyed, so he came as a refugee to India and we received him. And therefore, China became more hostile to India because they had wanted to destroy Tibet as it existed. And Dalai Lama's continued life in India was a major irritation for them. But till 1962, we were holding talks about the border. Various proposals were made to each other because they did not accept the traditional border which was in existence during the British period. So it was in the middle of this when we were negotiating honestly about the border that this aggression took place. And India was least prepared for it. And therefore we had a huge setback and I remember how, what experience we had at that time of being completely defeated in a war by China. Our soldiers not, were not equipped for a war. We had not expected it. They did not have even proper clothes to fight a war on, in the mountains. So our, our army withdrew all the way down and left several parts of Indian territory in the hands of the Chinese. And they had come all the way down to the Assam area. But just as they came with great surprise, causing great surprise, they caused another surprise by quickly withdrawing from these areas. And uh, the situation at that time was the whole of what is now called Aksai Chin, which is Ladakh is part of it, in the west, and Arunachal Pradesh in the east, they claimed for themselves and they occupied Akshay Chin, something like 34,000 square kilometers. And they left Arunachal Pradesh, but said Arunachal Pradesh belonged to them. So since then, we have had several rounds of discussions and the Chinese kept discussing issues, line of control, etc., etc. But at the same time, occasionally, they uh, created one clash or the other on the border just to keep the whole issue open. They would not accept any of the proposals that we made. And uh, they just were playing for time. They were not time bound. These discussions were not time bound. But we worked out some arrangement by which we said, okay, let the border be discussed at the same time, let us have normal relations with China in 1988. Under that, 1993, we had an agreement that neither side shall try to alter the situation by the use of force. And so we have a notional line of actual control on the border which is not marked anywhere, not clearly spelled out, 
but the idea was both the countries will keep peace on their side of the border without violating the line of actual control. But China several times came into our territory, causing confusion and concern among us. And then after a lot of discussions, etc., they say, oh, okay, we will go back and we'll continue the discussion. So basically the idea was to keep India on its toes and so that they can negotiate from a power of strength, from a position of strength to finally settle the border. But they don't seem to have the idea of doing that. And the last phase of took place in 2017 at a place called Dokalam, which is the area where Bhutan, India, and China meet. And there again, the border is not clearly spelled out. And that also was resolved in some form, no final solution. And in 2022, soon after the outbreak of the pandemic, China again started moving forces into this region and they started crossing the what we consider the line of control. Because the Chinese have their own idea where this line lies. We have our own idea. And uh, we used to have arguments, and even sometimes, you know, some kind of conflict, not with arms and ammunition, no firing, but arguments, and then they will go back. Sometimes they'll come back again, etc. So the uncertain kind of situation. But we developed good relations and trade and other things, and we were somehow managing it. But after the pandemic, when the whole world was under panic at that time, without any explanation of any kind, China again came into the same region as in 1962, in the Ladakh region. And uh, they moved in with uh, this time with very heavy tanks and mortar, heavy equipment and thousands of soldiers, unprecedented since 1962. So we were completely taken aback, but not like in 1962. We were quite prepared for a situation like this. We had built roads all along the border. We had made certain structures on our side of the border. And uh, we have were fortified and our army was fairly ready to meet this kind of aggression. So this happened in April 2020. And the, the, more, the most important areas where they invaded India were somewhere around Sikkim area, and also the Pangong Lake, because all these names may be unfamiliar to you, but you need to know at least the names. When somebody says Pangong Lake, you should know where it is and what it is. It might be useful to look at a map. So there is a lake called Pangong Lake and the north bank is occupied by China and the south bank is occupied by India. And in our idea, this lake is some kind of a, of a, of a landmark which separates India and China. But here what, they ha what happened was they came into what we consider our area and uh, particularly an area called Galva, you must have heard about, where, was, where some uh, fighting had taken place in 1962 also. But India's strategy right from the beginning was to deal with China in three different ways. One, to negotiate, start discussions. And secondly, to prepare ourselves, make ourselves strong, as well as possible. And third, meet them economically by creating barriers, trade barriers, economic barriers, etc., so that they pay a price for what they did. So several rounds were of conversation took place, including at the foreign minister's level, national security advisors level, then local commanders level. There is a working mechanism for solution of problems in which army and uh, civilians participate. So all these mechanisms were placed into action. And then we were told that China was going to withdraw 
uh, from the Galvan area. And presuming that they were withdrawing, an Indian Army unit went there basically to verify. Because we, our principle is trust. Of course, trust is, in, is deficient between India and China. But we have to trust to a certain extent. So we trusted them, but we decided to verify. And the Indian Army went there. And a clash took place. Of course, again, without firing a gun, but a physical fight in which strangely and unexpectedly Indian soldiers died, about 20 of them. They were pushed down the hill or they were close to death in the water, whatever. But we accepted and we acknowledged that 20 Indian soldiers were killed in this conflict. And the Chinese have not said anything. Initially, they said they suffered casualties themselves, but they said they did not say anything further, but there were reports that China had lost 45 soldiers in this. And that is our calculation also. But uh, recently, the Soviet, the Russian news agency, put out a report saying it's called TAS. TAS is the Russian newspaper agency, news agency. And they put out a story confirming that actually 45 Chinese soldiers had died in Galvan area. But anyway, after that, they pulled out of that, and there is a considerable peace there. But in the other areas, on the two sides of the uh, Pangong River, there was no movement, except sometimes they push us, and we push them back. And again, they come back and try to capture some land, and they did. We had to move back occasionally. So this went on for quite a quite some time. And uh, neither side was stopping or conceding anything. And at this stage, India took a tactical move. For the first time we have done this, this has not been done in the past. There is something called a Kailash Range on the southern side of Pangong Lake, which is entirely Indian. Nobody was claiming it or anything like that. But this Heights, as they were called, the so called Kailash Heights, you know, not very hospitable. It was very difficult for soldiers to go there. Even after you go there, it is difficult to stay there and not enough support area, etc., was there. But we quickly managed to establish some facilities there. And on the night of 29, 30th August, India surprised China by occupying these heights. There was nothing in this because this was our own territory. But still, the Chinese tried to resist it. Why? Because if Indian soldiers are on top of these heights, they have a very good view of the Chinese soldiers on the other side of the lake. And from a strategic point of view, from a defense point of view, this is very inconvenient for the Chinese side. At the same time, they couldn't say anything because this is our own land. But their argument was that India was not there before and why you have occupied even your own land. Because even in the case of Nokalam, they were asking us to move from our own land. But uh, we did not do that. And here again, they started pushing us uh, to come away from the, the heights uh, that uh, we had occupied. And so the uncertainties continued and discussions continued also at say various levels. We have fairly working arrangements with China at the commander's level, even lower levels, and also at the higher level, we have always had communications with China, except that we had no explanation as to what they were trying to do. And finally, just the other day, about four or five days ago, the Chinese made an announcement that it has started withdrawing from the northern side of the Pangong Lake to areas which they used to occupy before this situation changed in April. So the traditional position, they said they were moving, but at the same time, they said 
that they were moving in a synchronized and organized manner to disengage. India had not said anything. So it was surprising because they were talking about a synchronized and organized withdrawal. And we did not hear anything from our authorities. So the first news came after nine months of uh, uh, a kind of standoff or standstill. They declared that an arrangement has been reached or an agreement has been reached between India and China to have a synchronized, which means they move a little, we move a little, and um, also in an organized disengagement. Why India did not announce it? Because our parliament was in session and such uh, important matters, if they occur during a parliament session, we are supposed to announce it only in the parliament. So our Defense Minister Rajnath Singh spoke in Rajya Sabha and the Lok Sabha, confirming what the Chinese had announced. But uh, uh, we said that uh, both the sides have agreed to uh, cease their deployment in the new areas, and they will go back to the original positions, uh, which meant that uh, there was no need for any clash. These areas are fairly well known. Conflicts have taken place earlier. And there are some areas which India was patrolling and other areas China was patrolling. And uh, LAC was, of course, not very clearly known, but uh, there used to be confrontation once in a while that the Indians will go take a patrol into this region just to show our interest and also our presence. And sometimes they will encounter the Chinese. They come to the same areas. And there would be a little bit of shouting or a little bit of uh, arguments. And both go back to their original position. So that area is known as Finger 3, which is established as India's position. And Finger 8, these are these uh, you know, extension of land, which looks like human fingers. And eight is the established position for China, and three is the established position for India. But we used to move further into the other side and there from their side, because that area was not demarcated for anyone. So now what has happened is, we go to our position in three, and they will go to their position in eight. And the new, new thing here is that no patrolling will be done in this area till further discussion and decision. This is a new development because their withdrawing to our withdrawing to three and their withdrawing to eight was nothing unusual. But the general practice of patrolling the other side or LAC, China Actual Control was stopped or suspended. And this is what it is being characterized as a moratorium on patrol. So we'll come to that. What does it mean and how does it affect our interest? So everybody has not moved as yet, but it is confirmed that both sides have started moving artillery weapons, you know, huge machinery, etc., because it takes time and tanks. Both have deployed tanks because this area is somewhat flat. It's, a, it's called tankable area. So in this area, they move the tanks backwards, both sides, and armor vehicles back, back, backwards. And of course, the soldiers are still preparing themselves and they have to uh, bring down the structure they had built during this period. For them to live there, they need uh, facilities. And both sides had agreed also to demolish those structures. So please remember, they withdraw to finger three, which is established as India's position. And the Chinese go to finger eight. And that area is about six to eight kilometers. Away. I don't know the region very well, but only on maps. So, and this area in effect will become what is called a no man's land. And this is a proposal that China had made many years ago, saying that we create a no man's land 
in this area so that there is no clash and nobody goes to the other side. And in effect, that is what we have accepted. So we have accepted to go back to our position. They have agreed to go back to their position. And the principle being that status quo as in April 2020 will be restored. So Prime Minister's promise to the world, to India, to his people was that we will go back to April 220 position before the Chinese government. That's our commitment. And that is what we have been trying to do. So in a sense, we have achieved it. It is a 2020, April 2020 position. But we have lost in some ways, first because we have to move from our own territory in the Kailash Ridge, which we occupied with great difficulty, though they are on our own side, and China want to try to resist it. So in a way, we have conceded to China that these heights will be vacated. And strategically, it is very important for China. That is one concession we have made, shall we say. The second concession is that we have agreed to suspend patrolling to an extent suggesting, both suggesting that they will not claim this region and it may become a no man's land. There is an argument going on between the government and the opposition that whether this no man's land is mostly Indian land or is it mostly Chinese land. We say that we have not conceded even an inch of Indian territory as the Indian position. So when you say Indian territory and Chinese territory, etc., it's all very unclear. You cannot say that this is a stone here or a line here. No. So in principle, we have said that we have not surrendered any territory. But the biggest criticism against the government is, why did we withdraw from our own territory? In fact, many strategic thinkers in India, particularly army officers who have served in these regions. They had said that even if the Chinese refused to withdraw from Pangong Lake, we should not withdraw from the Kailash Ridge because that would be tactically a mistake that India makes. And this was a big achievement that we had gained as a result of this, and therefore we should not withdraw. And that has been overruled by the government of India. So there is criticism that we have gone back, but the prime minister is right when he says that we have restored status quo. That means now the situation is exactly what it was in April 2020. With the additional factor that we have removed all the construction that we built there, we'll not patrol this region, and this will become a no man's land. So this is what has happened. And this is considered a gain for both sides and more than anything else for peace. So generally, countries around the world who are interested in this situation will welcome this because it's a, it's a progress in that way in this region. But the first we have to deal with the challenge by the opposition. Mr. Rahul Gandhi and Mr. Anthony have spoken against it. Mr. Rahul Gandhi more politically saying that uh, we have surrendered to China. We, the prime minister has no guts to stand up to the Chinese. You know, this is all done by among a few people. Nobody knows. The opposition has not been taken into, into confidence. And there is a surrender of Indian land, which should never be permitted. And so he made a a lot of accusations. They were basically political accusations and uh, not necessarily speak on non specific issues. But Mr. A.K. Antony, who tried to speak about it in the Rajya Sabha, he was not permitted to do so. So he called a press conference and made the same points that Mr. Rahul Gandhi had made, saying that we lost out. It's not fair that India has uh, accepted this. And therefore, this is a very major defeat for India. And uh, as a result, this may have implications for India. And so he said, why did we 
move out from there. And we should have insisted on uh, the Chinese going away. And then the issue was what happened to the other area. There are two major areas, a place called the Gogra and a place called Depsang. These are areas which are very vital for India and uh, as vital for India as well as for China. Because if they have to move from Depsang and um, leave Depsang for us, China will become vulnerable. India will not be, they become vulnerable. And if we, if we withdraw in Depsang, we will also become vulnerable and go ground. But this has not even been discussed. So Mr. Anthony is saying that we should have solved all these problems, not pieces, not into bits and pieces, because then we will not know that we are making these concessions. And uh, the opposition view, the Congress point of view is that this has been a surrender. But impartial observers accept uh, that this was a good beginning. And uh, this is not ended. Mr. Uh, Rajnath Singh said that. This is not final. Many things have to be yet settled. And uh, nothing is settled unless everything is settled. So that's a principle that people accept. But this criticism is also there. Then when will these be discussed? And uh, how these will be resolved, resolved, we don't know. So the disengagement in Galvan Valley and Pangong are a reality, even though the opposition says that this is a, a surrender to of India's rights. And, uh, but the government is saying that this is a progress and now we'll have to deal with uh, Debsang and Gogra, etc. in future. And then, of course, discussions will continue with the representatives of the two governments as to where the border lay. So on that issue, things are still all open. But rightly so, what happened from April 2020 has been corrected, strictly speaking, even though there are these other elements in it. So we are saying that uh, it might be, I mean, we, we are saying that we will probably be able to uh, deal with the other situations, Depsang and Gogra, etc. And um, we will move towards a solution to this, this problem. Now, India is, will now, now be staying near finger three, which is called uh, a, a, a tapas place. And this is a little history, just uh, for the sake of interest. This is an area where a big fierce fight took place under a major of the Indian Army called Major Thapa. And uh, he was in 62. He was surprised when the Chinese attacked him and his small number of soldiers. In the first attack, they killed half of them. Then they killed the other half. And the belief was that all of them were killed. And Major Thapa was given the Paramir Chakra posthumously and he was honored in the belief that he had died. But it turned out later that the Chinese had taken prisoners of three Indian soldiers, including Major Thapa. And this gentleman who was supposed to have died emerged. He came out, he came back. And another soldier escaped from the Chinese um, uh, prison. And so out of the three, two survived. And so this area is named after Major Thapa, who fought valiantly in this, this region. That is what you hear about that. So from finger three to finger eight, we have not conceded it. This is what you have to remember. What Mr. Rahul Gandhi said was that we have conceded, we have given up this land, etc. But that is not true, but this is still to be discussed. Uh, one um, strange thing is that somebody produced, somebody produced a newspaper clipping of July 1962. And history had repeated. This time only it had repeated itself because in 1962, before the actual war took place, 
there was a conflict in this very area, Galvan and the lake, Pangsong, Pangsong Lake, Pangong River. And there was a huge news item in the Indian Express of that day saying Prime Minister welcomes withdrawal of Chinese troops from Ladakh in July 1962. Everybody was happy. And in October 1962, China started its aggression against India. So many people are very skeptical about what happened. So if in 1962, the same thing had happened and the war started, what is the guarantee that the war will not start again? This is to make it, make the reality check as it were. So we should not be unduly happy that this has happened because this has happened before also and it led to a war situation. So, yes, it is progress, it's acceptable. We have to take this further, but there is no reason for us to be unnecessarily happy. And one other incident that took place is Mr. V.K. Singh, General V.K. Singh, uh, who is now a minister in the uh, Modi cabinet, but he is not dealing with defense. When the question of crossing of the LAC was mentioned, for the first time, he said, as a former general, he said, we also have crossed the LAC many times. Oh, that came as a surprise to most of us because we had never conceded that we had crossed. Yes, we went patrolling, etc., just to establish our uh, claim. But to say that we crossed the LAC, and he also said, we have crossed the LAC more times than the Chinese. He said, if they have crossed 10 times, we have crossed 50 times. I don't know why he said this, but the Chinese have immediately said, yeah, the Indians have been lying so far. Now they are telling the truth. And this is the problem. They keep crossing the line of control. And this is not something that we had ever conceded, but even now, officially, the government of India has not um, confirmed it. But General V.K. Singh often says things like that. He was the first one to say the Chinese died in the Galvan Valley for 45 people. That also, he was the first one to give it to the, new, give it to the newspapers. So this is a, a side story. So as prospective um, civil, civil service officers, this is an aspect India-China conflict and the border, etc. are fundamental for you. You should know these details, not in the minute details, but the general trend. So what do we have to remember? We have to remember that the standoff of about nine months has ended in two sectors. And this is progress. And there are other sectors to be uh, clear, but that will be a matter for further discussion. And the opposition has not accepted that this is a victory, and they have said this is a surrender, while the government has claimed that this is progress. As a result of, first of all, we took very strong action by taking the Kailash range, that the government of India keeps saying. That was a very crucial decision that we took, and it's because of that crucial decision that the Chinese are now made concessions, which is also, or which may also be true. So, once this, it's not going to be easy. It's a very cold area and, this, and it is getting colder and colder. And the movement of people are very, very uh, slow. And so this may take weeks or months. And it will be then that we'll be addressing the other issue. And by then, the snow may have melted and we may be able to uh, consider this in, the, in greater detail. So it's a limited success and beginning of a settlement of some of these issues. But we should not have any illusion that this is a, a final settlement or whether it is even a progress. But it is not certainly a surrender as the opposition claims. So these are the things that you have to remember. You must remember these, uh, these words, north and south of the Pangong Lake. You should know what it is, where it is. And then these fingers, if you look at the map, you'll see these fingers numbered as such. And so these are all areas uh, indicated as line of actual control. 
and the settlement will be made only after the discussions are completed. In China seems to be no hurry. So many of you, after you join the foreign service or the other service or become ambassadors of India, you may still be dealing with this, even if in the examination, you may not have to answer any questions. But this is something that will follow you, I don't know how long, and therefore this is extremely important. Thank you very much. Thank you.